Interesting day today. As uh, we take a look at the market, I woke up and uh, nothing too alarming. Now I took a look at uh, what was happening in the crypto digital asset space. But I got to tell you, as time has gone on, we've seen a little bit more of a pullback. And this wasn't really a big surprise uh, for what was happening. We did a video yesterday and I just talked about how May will probably end up being a down month. And that's the first real down month for the last uh, six or so and how I think there's going to be more pullbacks or a regression as time moves forward. And we talked about two specific months in particular, August and September, and we just take a look at, at the historical trends. We didn't take a look at what's going on globally. We did take a look at uh, some positive news that was going on with the, uh, the debt ceiling and the, and the ability for the America to actually pass that part or actually have a handshake. And then of course the next part was that 30% Bitcoin tax and how that was actually positive. So. We had that piece, we didn't really talk about too much, but in the, in the comments, people were, were talking, were saying, but Rob, you don't understand, what about China? What about China? What about China? What about China? I'm like, what about China? And uh, I mean, yeah, there was, uh, there was this, this new piece that was, uh, that was passed, and this is from Forbes, talking about how it's a big deal uh, for a huge China earthquake after Bitcoin, Ethereum, blah, 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 price swings, and so on and so forth. And everybody's expecting this big news from Hong Kong to break out and uh, push us into this major bull market, which, I mean, could very well happen. And this is from actually Cointelegraph. Hong Kong's retail trading regime is days away from going live, and crypto exchanges are keen to make entry into the region. Here's the thing. Uh, there's nuances there. There's some pieces that you need to know. First of all, uh, this is going to happen in Hong Kong, not mainland China. Hong Kong has about 7.2 million people. Great. Uh, China has uh, about 1.4 billion people. China is not going to adopt this yet. Hong Kong is off, not the mainland. It's uh, one country, two systems. So with Hong Kong coming in, that's fantastic. It's, it's a very rich uh, land, a lot, of, a lot of people that are interested in the crypto. And this is great, but you gotta understand something. When June 1st comes around, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden they flip a switch and all retail is able to trade and get in. June 1st is the first day they are going to take in applicants for retail exchanges for those investors to start to trade, buy, and sell crypto and digital assets. Now, right now, you have institutions that can do those things, and they can do that until June 1, but they know that the process could take a while. So what we're seeing today, this nice little sell-off, could be potentially uh, people who are thinking to themselves, well, okay, it's illegal to do anything until everything gets up and running for uh, these exchanges that they're going to allow here in Hong Kong, maybe I should dump some things. I'm not saying that's exactly what it is, but that's what it could be. And then if I'm thinking it, I guarantee other traders are thinking it. They're like, you know what? Maybe I'm just going to take a little bit of off the top and uh, I will see how this all progresses. So there is that piece. So maybe there's something going on right there. And actually, a guy over at Coin Bureau did a great a great video about what's going on as far as Hong Kong and crypto regulations. I linked that in the description. You can check that out. Uh, also, as a quick reminder, we'll be doing NFA Live, me, Ben, and, and Guy tomorrow on Guy's channel. But one of the things that, that really stood out in the video was they talked about the requirements for which cryptos will be listed. And one of those criteria is they have to be at least part of, of an ETF, at least part of an index. And from the data they pulled, they took a look and they said, well, there's a good possibility that Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Polkadot, Solana, Cardano, Avalanche, Polygon, and Chainlink will be listed. So I can't give you financial advice. I can't tell you exactly what to do, but I will say that uh, if it was me, and it is me, I will definitely be taking a look at these cryptos to maybe pop off as everything goes to the regulation and Hong Kong retail investors are able to invest into crypto. So I can see that. But regardless, so today's a pullback. So what do we do? Well, I did this video, gosh, last oh, over a month ago, somewhere in uh, April 30th or around May 1st or something like that. 
And we talked about sell Bitcoin in May and go away. And I took a look at just historical references to see where the market could be potentially. And there was two months, one month in particular that I was a little bit worried about, September. And that historically has been the worst month. And we talked about this yesterday too. It is the worst month, uh, not just in the crypto digital asset market, but also in traditional finance. September is the worst. So I took a look at that. I took a look at the different aspects of where we usually go as far as what happens in the four-year cycles. And I took a look also at uh, midterm elections and presidential elections and how that would kind of fall into, into play because there was a couple of data points that it's not always true to sell a man go away, not every single year. The conclusion I had was this, I'm not going to sell a man and go away, not for this one. And I still think there's some upside potential, but maybe I was wrong on this one. Maybe it didn't, it doesn't truly work out. I will say this though, if we do start seeing a little bit of decline because of the thing that's happening in Hong Kong or whatever else is going on, regulatory uncertainty, what would be great though is that if this happens, let's say it happens for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, I will say that in all honesty, June and July are not bad months. July being one of the best months out there. So if we have all of June that doesn't really work out too well in our favor and things go down, I think July could be a pretty good month. And then August, eh, so and so forth. And then September, we might hit a little bit of a skid just for traditional. So I see these things as positive, but uh, it, only time will tell. And yeah, let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And then just to, uh, just to talk about real quick, some lessons learned. Voyager. Now, I just got an email. It looks like Voyager is going to liquidate. They're not going to go through the whole Chapter 11 process. They're going, well, it is a still a process, but they're going to liquidate all the funds and return those back. How that happens, if that's crypto in kind or cash, really depends on, on how things work out. But it looks like potentially we get back somewhere between 25 and 35%. Gotcha. So that's a bummer. However, at least we do get something back. And I will say this, it is, a, it is a great lesson for me, especially moving forward. And one of those is, well, there was actually two lessons. First of all, don't be like Voyager and give a uh, 640 million uncollateralized loan to a shady group of people named Three Arrows Capital or any shady people, and especially not uncollateralized, just because they sent you a piece of paper that said, we have the money, ridiculous. That's the first lesson, which I think we all can understand that. And the next lesson was constantly remind people that all investments can go to zero. Everything can go to zero. Everything I just talked about can go to zero. Everything, everything, everything. Could, could Bitcoin go to zero? Sure, why not? Do I think it will? Nah, eh, probably not. I think there'll be somebody buying Bitcoin at a dollar if it goes down that low for whatever reason. But everything's a gamble and you're gambling. Some of you are, more, are gambling more than others. And I talked about this, this token, flip it. And it was a meme coin. And I said about, I don't know, 50 times, you are gambling for all these meme coins. You are gambling, you are gambling, you are gambling. And I can't say it anymore. Like there's always gonna be one person that says, hey man, I lost funds because I got into meme coins. Okay. I'd rather talk about it out in the open and tell you it's gambling than to not say anything and have people come to the channel and go, hey, I lost a bunch of money. So we talked about Flipcoin. I said, it's totally gambling. I said, I'm going to have some tokens and I will dump on you. And I was very honest. I will dump on you if given the chance. So here we have the Flip It. This is from DexTools.io. And we can see that uh, majorly, we're going <laughs> in the direction that I thought it was supposed to go, which is straight down. And that is the beauty of meme tokens. Now, could this skyrocket back up? Sure, why not? But you're gambling. And when I said I'd dump on you, so here's my MetaMask wallet. And this is where I receive my flip tokens. And you can see here on the address, I'm not gonna show you everything, but the people in my community, they can verify this. I did a nice little airdrop to my community of roughly 100 million Flip It tokens to the people who asked for it and gave me their addresses. So right now, if you wanna know, 
there's a bunch of people in the comment section, they can verify that I did give them 100 million flip it tokens. And they can also verify on that MetaMask wallet if I did dump or not. I'll let them say that and they can figure it out. So again, you're gambling and that's just the truth. And if I was given the chance again, I would dump on you because it's gambling. And then lastly, and then I, th this is the thing. The amount of gambling that's going on right now, I think we deserve what we get, quite honestly. So that's not the only meme coin out there. And I'm not looking down on people if they gamble. I mean, I lived in, in Vegas for two years, who cares? If you wanna gamble, sure, just know the risks. But there's this thing that really gets to me. And it's an address, and you can check this on Etherscan. That's what's great about uh, crypto digital assets. You can, you can verify everything. You don't have to trust anybody. You can just verify and track everything. It's an Ethereum address where it says, you get nothing.eth. And it says, and it's got a, accounts in, on social media presence. And it says, if you send me anything, any kind of ETH or any random tokens, you'll get nothing. Here's my address. And so far, people have sent um, 629 ETH or almost $1.17 million worth of Ethereum plus $20,000 in random tokens, such as Pepe and Tether and Gatecoin, whatever else. So congratulations. Uh, if this isn't the top before we start crashing, I don't know what is. I mean, people are literally just giving their, their money away. That's amazing to me. And it's not because it's like, it's a charity or it's going someplace. It's just, hey, send me this stuff and you'll get nothing. And people are doing it. <sighs> and that's it. So if you follow me on Twitter, uh, I showed you the address and that's truly amazing. But that's it for today. So look, I just wanna do a quick uh, live stream just to get everybody into the information that we have. But uh, before you take off, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. You don't have to subscribe to me. But again, this isn't like a set it and forget it type of thing. Maybe you should follow somebody that can give you some news so you can keep abreast of the situation and be informed. But that's it. So thanks so much, everybody. I appreciate you for stopping by.